nine canceled fights that year. It's okay. It's okay. No, I'm... I find comfort in the chaos. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. First thing I want to talk about before we talk about fighting is your acting debut, the movie coming out. Tell me about that. So it's actually coming out December 1st on Amazon Prime. Um, it is an action-packed uh thriller it's fun it was a great experience um i play a badass and um it was it was great it was my first acting experience um on a uh, film mm -hmm. i used to do like one acts and stuff like that in high school but uh never anything of this magnitude and so it's it was a lot of fun and hopefully i get to do it in the future again yeah, I hope so. You know, what I mean, it's maybe yeah, you know, it's the start of something, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, now December second, you're gonna be returning in Austin, Texas. It's not too far from home. It must feel to be fighting close to home with like your situation with the newborn and you know the family and everything, right? Yes, it is. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, she's actually gonna be with me. We're gonna be traveling. I'm taking in uh, an extra person. Um, so uh our our sitter our, our nanny she's actually going to be coming with us and uh my goal my like what i dream about is to win my fight and then to hold my baby up in the center of the cage <laughs> so hopefully your lion king moment your lion yes, king yes, moment <laughs> my lion king moment um i think she would love it um she is such a ham for an audience so mm -hmm. anytime we're at the gym she's you know always the center of attention she loves just being in the mix of things. So uh, hopefully I get to do that. I am going to work my hardest to do that, but mm -hmm. I think that would just be such a cool experience for both of oh, us. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely a cool experience. And then when she grows up and sees that, because she'll have no remembrance of it, right? She'll okay, be like, right, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. When she grows up, you know, she'll be able to say, you know, my mom was a badass. But yeah. um, I mean, that's, Neither here nor there. Um, I think being so close to home, actually, it's my first time fighting in front of an audience since 2019. Uh, the Apex doesn't really count <laughs> because I did fight in the Apex, but it, it was very limited. Um, so that's that's amazing. And my entire team, I feel like the entire state of Oklahoma is going to go to Texas. And um, I'm going to have such a huge group of people from so many different walks of life so many different gyms uh come in and cheer me on and that's really humbling it's really exciting yeah. and i'm so thankful that it's so close to home a lot of them were ready to go to vegas but <laughs> Austin, <laughs> a little bit more doable yeah is there any like rivalry between texas and oklahoma is there anything to that yes <laughs> huge rivalry uh actually um ou beat texas uh this year and um <laughs> uh it wasn't expected um it, actually at my my office there's a huge rivalry between the the texas grads and the ou grads um yeah it's hopefully they'll look past me being in, uh, in oklahoma <laughs> but and we can collectively come together as the midwest of course, of course. Um, Misha Tate, you know, former champion, a pioneer of the sport, ranked number 11, you know what I mean, which is great. What do you think about her and, and the fighting style? I think it's great. I think it's really going to showcase what I've been working on these past couple of years. Um, I know for people who look at my film, um, wrestling seems to be some sort of a deficit for me. Um, it's not, I promise. Um, so... I think I'm going to really show how well-rounded I am. I mean, she's amazing. I remember um, a couple days ago on my memories, Facebook memories, um, it popped up when Misha Tate first retired. And I thanked her. It was seven years ago. And I thanked her. I said, uh, thank you, Misha Tate, for being a legend in the sport and paving the way for women's MMA. And then now I get to fight her. <laughs> like, it's... Uh, 
it's really cool when you work so hard that your um, your idols become your peers, and you know you get to I, I I get to punch someone in the face that I enjoy that I like. You know what I mean? Like it's cool. Every punch is respectful, right? <laughs> Every single one. That's why it's gonna be hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she retired and then she came back. Since her return, she's one and two. Do you see the same fighter that that uh, was, you know, the the prime version of Misha Tate back back seven years ago? I don't, um, but I don't think it's any fault of her own. I think mm -hmm. women's MMA has evolved, um, and you know, people have different priorities. I'm not, you know, saying one thing or another, but uh, I think that the game has evolved a lot more. There's these girls that are coming in with so many different skill sets that really combat people that are specialists or that are known as specialists. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one to speak. I'm only two years younger than her. Like we haven't reached our prime yet, but, um, I think, I think I'm at a different level than, um, a lot of the girls in my division. And you get to prove that against Misha Tate, which is awesome. <laughs> you know, a lot of eyes on this, right? Because it's Misha Tate, which is great for you. You get the big stage. Yeah, I'm really grateful for her um, and for her taking this fight and for her name. I, it does give me a lot of uh, reputation and street cred um, once I get the win over a former champion. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, the last woman that came back from pregnancy that I remember talking to was me Mackenzie Dern. Look what she's been doing since her pregnancy. Same kind of like same situation, right? Amazing. It's uh yeah. listen, mom strength is a real thing. My, <laughs> my sparring partners and my training partners, um <laughs> one of them, <laughs> he said she got that mom strength now. That's it. It's a whole nother level. It's a whole nother level. And there's something to be said. Like you said, uh, Mackenzie Darren, she came back and she's on a tear, on a yeah, tear. Yeah. She's doing her thing. And yeah, mom strength is comparable to old man strength, you know, like they have that yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, some might not be so receptive to that. I am, but it is, yeah. it is a real, real thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to rewind a little bit, you know, ahead of your last scheduled fight against Raquel Pennington, you injured your knee, right? Take us through the knee injury and, and the recovery. Absolutely. So um, December of 2021, I was supposed to fight Raquel Pennington. Uh, that fell through because I blew out my knee, um, uh, my ACL and my meniscus. And that's actually the reason why I became a mother. Um, I knew I was going to be out for a year. And, you know, I'm not getting any younger. And so I told my husband, I was like, hey, I'm going to be out. Like, do you want to try to have a kid? He's like, yeah, totally. And uh, within a month, I was pregnant. And so it's, you know, people are always saying that I timed that perfectly. And I'm like, nah, man, God has a plan. I'm just listening. So uh, I made the best of a situation. And... Um, you know, my recovery, it actually helped me a lot because I'm the type of person that doesn't like sitting down. I was working out all throughout my pregnancy. Um, I worked out the day that I delivered. And uh, I think being injured and recovering and then being pregnant, that coupled together, like I was very aware and gentle with my body and um, with the recovery process after. Uh, you know, like I said, I was working out, but despite me working out throughout my entire pregnancy, I still got huge. Um, I was 225 pounds after delivery. <laughs> so I've lost almost a hundred pounds to get to uh, bantam now. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't think people didn't realize that pregnancy was difficult on my body, not because, I wasn't taking care of myself, but that's just the way my body reacted. And that's absolutely fine. Um, I did a great job providing for my daughter and, you know, I wouldn't change it. 
with, with the combination of factors that you're describing, you know, going through the pregnancy and being more gentle with your body, do you feel like your knee is stronger than it would maybe if you weren't pregnant, you know, and trying to recover? Absolutely. I think that really, really helped out a lot. Um, maybe I got some stem cells from her when she was in utero. <laughs> but um, I think I am definitely a lot stronger because of it. Um, I, I had to be. I had to be careful. I had to be gentle. It wasn't about me anymore. It was about me and her. Was was the training after the pregnancy more focused on the weight loss? Or were you thinking like, okay, I want to work on certain skills? It was always skills. It's always skills. Um, weight loss will come. Uh, actually, I didn't see any weight loss until I stopped nursing her, and I had to stop nursing her. Sorry. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. This is Pi. She's uh, doing a little video bomb. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the I didn't really worry about the weight loss. I knew that was going to happen. I'm strict enough that I can make it happen. So um, it's always been skill and it's always been focusing on what is my uh, deficit, what it, what I need to work on. And when were you able to get back into like full blast training? I started getting back into training. Let's see, I had my daughter October. Uh, I had to have an emergency C-section. So um, it took recovery took a little bit longer. So I was really working on making sure everything was good. So I would say March of this year is when, was when I started training. And then I went to the PI in July. And I was, I was still pretty heavy then. I think I was like 185. <laughs> I was like, hey, Walter Waits. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I and when I got to that point, when I went to the PI in July, I um, I was like, hey, I want to fight before the end of the year. And they're like, oh, are you sure? You're kind of heavy. <laughs> like, no, I got this. I promise. Just let's get there. And did they give you like a protocol to, to follow to, to yeah. get to the point where you need to be? They actually, they, they do help out a lot. The UFC mm -hmm. is amazing and the PI, everyone at the PI is so accommodating and understanding of my desires, what I want to do, um, what I want to accomplish. And so they, there's no way for me to not be able to meet my goals. They lay out the plan. They provide the supplements, provide the food, provide the guidance, um, provide the workouts if I need it. Um, and not only do I have them, but I have my support system here um, at my team at Outsiders. You know, parents are always willing to take my daughter if I need to do a class. Um, you know, it's I I had every reason to be successful. Yeah, you got a great community around you. I, I was talking to th about this with another fighter, like certain fighters, they're kind of like nomads. So they don't really have like a strong support system. They're kind of going everywhere. But there are certain fighters that have like a community behind them, which gets them to another level in their performances. Do you feel that way? Absolutely. I feel that way. Like I said, I feel like I have the entire state of Oklahoma behind me. Um, I can go into any gym and say, hey, you know, I need to hit a bag. I need to do this. I need to do that. And they're like, yeah, sure. No mat fees, no nothing. Um, I go to a yoga studio where I teach. Um, I, I teach a hit class, not yoga. <laughs> but everyone there is supporting me and uh, amazing. They're like, hey, what can we do for you? Um, like I said, at the gym, at my gym, I go to my gym, parents are willing to take my daughter and hold her for me, comfort her while I'm busy training. Um, it's really a humbling experience. Actually, what's really cool, um, the company that I work for now, I got back into the oil uh, business. My team is going to go down and watch my fight. So uh, it's, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. Um, to have the kind of support and to have the kind of community that we have fostered here with outsiders, with my husband, with my tribe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A tribe. And, and, you know, 2021 was the last time you were in like actual fight camp. Now it's 2023. What are the differences for you? <sighs> time. Time is a huge factor. It's a huge constraint. 
Um, I still try to wake up early in the morning, but sometimes I have to wake up early in the morning to comfort my daughter or to feed my daughter. It's not about me. Um, this morning, for instance, uh, instead of me being able to go lift, I had to wake up to a daughter that had a fever. And so I had to call into work. My lunch workout got, you know, dismantled and, uh, I had to focus on her. So now that she's feeling better, my husband's going to take her. I'm going to go train in the evening. And instead of getting three different sessions, I'm going to be able to only hit one. So time is a huge, huge uh, factor for me between uh, 2021 and now. But, I mean, there's, there's no other fighters it's no stranger to them like they, they they all notice but we're passionate and we got to the point of where we're at now being in the UFC being in the most you know recognized and best uh fight circuit that there is um because we are dedicated so I find a way yeah of course you always find a way a lot of improvising and you know before you even went away to to have your baby there was so much chaos with cancel fights. I, I think a lot of people forgot about all of that stuff. <laughs> Nine canceled fights yeah. that year. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. No, I, it's learning. I find comfort in the chaos and you just got to keep rolling. Uh, I'm not done. I'm not going to be done anytime soon. Um, I still have a lot in me and I still have a belt to get. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm here until until they they wheel me out <laughs> before you have your your lion king moment with your daughter what kind of fight are you expecting against misha tate i know she's a wrestler everybody knows she's a wrestler she has made a successful career and has been a champion based off of her skill set so i know she's going to want to go to the ground um difference is is i'm actually pretty good on the ground uh, I am a black belt in jujitsu. Um, I think I'm actually impressed by the strength that I am able to generate and the strength that I have now, uh, as opposed to who I used to be. So I think it's, I'm expecting her to want to shoot, um, especially after I hit her, after I touch her a couple of times. No one wants to stand with me. I remember with Sarge, um, she had an amazing game plan. She shot in because she got hit a couple of times and she's like, I don't want any of that. <laughs> so every time she was able to shoot in, um, my coach at the time, we weren't prepared for that. And so um, I didn't get any good direction from him. And uh, there was just a lot of miscommunication. So I wasn't able to, to recover from her taking me down. Now... That's something that I've been working on. So I expect her to want to take me down. She's not going to be able to hold me down. She's not going to be able to do anything with that. So, um, yeah. And if it does stay standing, which we've prepped for that as well, um, that hit like a freaking truck. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not a good plan, but we'll see. All right. Uh, one last topic. You know, you're you are scheduled to fight Raquel Pennington. Now she's fighting for the vacant bantamweight title against Maria Bueno Silva. How do you see that fight playing out? I am actually very impressed with Raquel. Um, she has been working a lot. I know she had a couple ups and downs in her career um, from injuries and coming back from that. Uh, and I think she switched up camps, but I am, I am impressed at her ability to move forward um, and to to strike. Her striking looks very crisp. Um, I think she's going to be the next champion. I think we're going to have our match just a couple years later. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, and and I definitely think it's going to be for the title. So I I wish her the best. And nothing against Myra. I just don't I don't see her being as well rounded as 
she thinks she is. Um, I actually would just like to see her and Juliana Pena fight just because I want to see that fight. I think that'll be, <laughs> that'll be saucy. <laughs> I, know. I you know what i'm i am not one i don't talk smack um i check people but i try to do it diplomatically uh but i i don't talk smack but i do love watching it <laughs> i will sit back with my tea and just be like oh okay <laughs> I think a lot of people are right now. You know, it's going. It's weird. It's like she's fighting Raquel Pennington, but they're going to war. She's going to war with Juliana Pena, which Pena's doing a great job of keeping herself in the mix. That's I think that's what it is. It's stay relevant, right? Like, yeah. um, you know, no, no publicity is or uh, any publicity is good publicity, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's Sean Strickland's um thing too. Yeah. Yeah, the king, the king of that, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> December 2nd, UFC Fight Night, Austin, Texas. Julia, thank you so much for the time. All the best in the fight. And uh, yeah, I'll be tuning in for this one. This is going to be a, a banger. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.